When you first log into VVox, you'll see the VVox homepage. and It'll look something like this. You can access your VVox sessions from here. You can change some global settings of your sessions, and you can also access help and resources from here. So first, I'm just going to show you how to get to health information and resources. So to do that, you click on the question mark here at the top right corner, and that's the help button. And as you can see, it says help and feedback and resources. So the first in help and feedback is getting started. And that just brings you to a getting started video that you can watch before you start making sessions. You can also go to the VVox Help Center. That has a lot of help uh, articles to do with VVox. So I could click on polling and then scroll through and click on any of the different help articles. And it'll have a video and instructions on how to use that feature. And I can also go back and search for things as well. So if I wanted to search for quizzes, type in quiz and then anything with the word quiz in it will come up in the search results there. If I go back again, I can click on what's new and that'll have a video on the latest updates in VVox if something new has been added recently. There's also a live chat. So if I'm looking for a help article, I can just ask the chatbot for it. So if I type in something like surveys, then the chatbot will send me different help articles to do with that. It's helpful. If I just go back to the list, there's a PowerPoint add-in. Uh, currently, we don't have the PowerPoint add-in in MTU, so ignore that for now. But if I click on videos, that'll bring you to the VVox YouTube account. And this account has a lot of instructional videos and use cases and things like that that you can watch do with VVox. Um, if I click on the webinars link, it'll bring me to the VVox webinars page. You can sign up for webinars to learn more about VVox as well. So all of these resources are really useful. If you click on the settings tab here, you have two options, account settings and admin settings. Under account settings, you can change your password if you need to. But under admin settings, you can change the default settings for all sessions created on your account. Just one thing to note that if you make changes to the settings when you already have sessions, the changes will only affect new sessions, not existing sessions. I'll go over all of the default settings that you can change for your sessions. These will make a bit more sense when we get to creating a session but I'll just go over them here. So Q&A settings. So a Q&A message board is where your students can submit questions during a session that you can answer during the class. And you can either by default have that turned off for all sessions or turned on. And of course, within a session, you can turn it off or on too. But if you want to just have them not in your sessions by default, you can turn them off here. Same with moderation. So moderation is where when your students do submit a question, it has to be moderated by you or another staff member before it can be displayed to students. So you can have that on by default or off by default. Then under poll settings, you can turn the profanity filter on or off. So that's when people are answering a poll. It can be filtered for any unsavory words, basically. You can change the voting results. So when you're displaying results for something, you can have it as a percentage, as a number, or as both. Then under identification, you can allow users to input a name or you can have them fully anonymous by default. Under session info, you can change the default message that students will see on the home screen of the participant app. So I can just edit this. Welcome to my class. I can change the text to be a different style. I can also change the color. I can add bullet points and things like that. Of course, you can change these within each session too. But if you want to add, have a default message for all sessions, this is where you do that. You can change the default present view settings. So in present view, you can have the join instructions showing or not showing, the QR code for the session showing or not showing, and the show response count showing or not showing. 
And when you're happy with whatever changes you're making, you can click save. And then that'll work for all your sessions. If you click on the branding tab, you can change the branding of your sessions. At the moment, you can see there's an MTU branding on the sessions. So the MTU logo and an MTU banner image. If you want to change that for some reason, you can do that. So I'm going to go back to the sessions tab here and show you how to create a session. So click the create session button and then give your session a name. So I'll say my new session and then click create. So as you can see, it's opened your new session. It has the name of your session up here and the session ID. And if you click back to sessions, you can see all your sessions here. So if you had multiple, you'd see each session shown here. So I'll go back into my session here, my new session, and I'm going to show you how to make a poll. So you can see there's different tabs here. So I'll just make sure I'm on the polls tab and then click create new. So as you can see here, there are multiple question types that you can have in your poll. So that includes multiple choice, word cloud, text, ranking, numeric, rating, XY plot and pin on image. So I can put in a question title. So for this poll, I'm just going to ask a question. Do you enjoy this class? And then I can put in choices. So yes, no. And if I had a third choice, I can put that in there. Also, if this poll was actually a quiz question, a live quiz, you could set a correct answer in it. You can also change the allowed selection. So if two answers are permissible, so if, if you want people to be able to answer two answers, you can put that there. And obviously this number will go higher the more answers are in your poll. So if I just click create, then we have the poll started. You can also import questions. So if you click the import button here, you can see there are a lot of preloaded VVox questions that you can use. So I just click on this one. You can see here there's different polls that you can import if you want to. So I'll just import this one. What are you most keen to hear about or learn in this session? And then click import. And then I don't have to type that out myself. So that saves a little bit of time. You can also go back in and edit questions. So if I just click on the options button here, then click edit, I can edit the question very easily. And I can also move questions, so have them in a different order, duplicate them, and delete them. You can also export polls and then import them into other sessions. So you could either select a single poll or select all of them, and then click this button here, and that will export the poll template. And then a file will download onto your machine like this. And then what you would do is click import on your session and then select that file so i just find it for my downloads here you can see it's here just click that and then it will import you just click import but i'm not going to do that because it's the same session so i'm just going to cancel for now so i've added a couple more questions to my poll as you can see at the top here it says this session is inactive for participants to answer polls you must first start the session so the moment the session is not started so nobody can join it so in order to allow students to join the session you need to click start session so i'll click that now to run the poll with your students you can run it through the presenter view so as you can see there's this little box here that has the presenter view in it I'm going to click this button here instead of present full screen so that this tab stays open. I'm just going to click here. And this is the screen that your students will see. So if you're on an online class, you could be just um, sharing this screen and not the dashboard. That's just for yourself. Or if you're in an in-person class, you could have the, this screen projecting to the students and have this screen just showing to yourself. So you can see here on the left, it has the join instructions. So if you're showing this to students in a live class, they can just go to vvox.app and type in this ID, or they can also 
scan the QR code, maybe if they're joining in on an online class, that might be easier. I can also copy a link to the session and send it to students. If I go back onto the dashboard here and click copy app link, I can send that link to my students. It'll just show you what the student view will actually look like. So I go to a new tab and paste in that app link. It'll bring me to the session. So you'll see it has the my new session and the welcome. And it also has the Q&A because the Q&A is enabled on this session. So as you can see here, the poll questions haven't actually been pushed out to the student. All they can do is access the Q&A right now. So you actually need to open each poll question for the students to be able to answer those questions. You could do that either from the VVox dashboard, see where it says open poll, you can click on anyone, or you could do it from the presenter view by clicking open poll here, and that's going to open the first question, or I could go to a specific one if I want to. But I'll just click open poll here. You'll see, do you enjoy this class comes up on the screen. So students will see that either in person or on your live class if you're showing the screen. And then they'll also see it on their participant app. So they just answer the question. So I'll just pretend to be a student and answer the question. Go back into the presenter view. You can see one of one has answered the question. Then if you want to show the results of the poll to cl the class, you can do that by clicking show results. And you'll see 100% of people, which is just one person because it was me, have said yes. When you no longer want to allow people to answer the certain poll question, you just click close poll and then you can move on to the next question. You can also, um, so if I move on to the next one and just click open poll, I can also start a timer. So I can select a certain time. So if I want to give them 30 seconds to answer a poll, then click start timer, timer will appear on screen, and then your students have 30 seconds to answer the poll. Then when the time is up, the poll will automatically close and you can move on to the next poll. So I'll go back into the student app and I can rate the current knowledge of the subject. So we'll just say four, and then I can show results. You can see 100% on four. So this is very handy if you want to show quick results to everybody. So I'll just click close poll on this one. Then run the next poll. I'll just be the student again, and then I can show the results, or I can just hide them. So now I'll just close this poll. And then open the final one, answer that as a student. And I can show that one, do a timer if I want to. And then that's all of the polls. So I'll just close that final poll. And as you can see, there's no more polls. So if I just want to end the entire session, what I do is go back into the dashboard, hover over the session, and then click end session. Say I sure you want to end the session, all participants will be removed. You'll no longer be able to participate. So if the class is over and you don't want students to participate in the poll anymore, you just click yes. And now your session is inactive again. If you want to allow students to submit questions during your session that you can answer live or get back to later, then you can use the Q&A feature. So I'll just click on the Q&A feature here. And you can see the Q&A board is turned to on, but if I wanted to pause it or turn it off, I just click on this drop down button here and select either of these. So I'm just going to start the session again so I can show you what the Q&A board looks like when a student uses it. So I just copy the app link again and pretend to be a student. Then I can put a question here. So question. And then, as you can see, it becomes published here, and it's also on the presenter view. And for this Q&A, I have moderation turned off, and that's why it's immediately shown in the presenter view. But you may want to be able to moderate questions before they display to all students. 
So in order to do that, you click the settings tab here, then click features and you want to click on moderation here. And I would re recommend you use that just so if there's students writing something that you don't really want to display to everyone, you can moderate it before it displays to all other students. So click save there. And then you'll see new tabs appear on the Q&A board tab. So there's needs review, reviewed and published and archive. So I'll go back and be a student again and ask another question. Just put question two and enter. And now you'll see a question appears on the needs review tab. So I'm going to click that here. You can see the question is here and you can review these questions. And then if you're happy for the question to be displayed to all students on the presenter view, just click the move to button here and you can move it to published. So if I click move to published, then that will display the question up here. But if the student wrote something that you don't want to display, like an expletive or something, you can go in, go to needs review, say you don't want that question at all. You can move it to archive. So I'll just click move to archive and it will never show to the students in the presenter view. You can also push out messages to the students that they'll see when they join the session. So if I just click, make sure I'm on the publish tab and click post message, I can put an announcement. So just type in announcement here and then click send. This will appear both on the presenter view and also on the student view. So as you can see, the Q&A can be turned on for any kind of session. It doesn't have to be just a Q&A session. So you could be running a poll, but also have the Q&A open for students to ask questions during class. Or you could have the Q&A open if you're running a live quiz during class. It's really up to you. But if you don't want the Q&A to be turned on at all, you can also just turn it off before you start your session, either doing a global change like I showed at the start or clicking on settings going to features and turning it off from there, or even just turning it off from here. So pause or turn off. So I'll just click turn off and then if I go into here. There's no longer a Q and A in this session. What you can also do is have other members of staff moderate questions so that you can focus on the, the delivering of the content. So if you have another member of staff that you can share this with, you just go back in and I'm just going to turn the Q&A back on and then I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to click sharing and then just wait for this to load up. And then I'll select Shane Cronin and if I click save, then Shane would have access to my session and he'd be able to edit the session if he wants, but also moderate the questions as they come in. Alternatively, you can just go to this button here, moderation, turn on moderator link. You can put a passcode in it if you want to, and then you can copy this link and share it with another staff member, and then they can go straight to the moderation screen. So if I just paste in what that looks like, share this with another staff member, and they can work on moderation questions as they come in. So then as questions come in, they can go to the needs review and push them onto published and you can keep focusing on the presenting the content of your lecture. The poll feature and the Q&A feature are really helpful for live classes, whether that be live in person or online classes. But if you want to poll or quiz your students asynchronously where they fill out answers in their own time, then you use a different feature called survey. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm just going to get out of this. I'm going to make a new session. So I just click create session again. I'm going to call it asynchronous session and then click create. So instead of clicking the polls tab, you're going to click the surveys tab and this is where you create an asynchronous survey and it can be either a quiz or a poll questions. And you'll notice it looks quite similar to the polls tab. The difference is with surveys, they can be taken asynchronously by your students so they can complete the questions in their own time and you wouldn't be presenting them on presenter view. 
you just be sending a link to the survey or quiz to your student and they complete it in their own time. So similar to polls, you can either create a new survey or import survey questions. If you click import, you'll see the VVOX has some preloaded surveys that you can use. So I'll just show you one and then you can choose which ones you want. If you want to choose some of these and you can always edit them later too. So if I just choose this lecture feedback one and import, then I've imported that survey. I can also import questions from another session if I've exported one. So earlier when we were doing the polls, I, uh, I exported the poll. I could actually import that file here. So I'm going to do that. Here it is. Import. You can see it's going to convert into a survey because it was a live poll before, but I'm importing it into a survey. I'm just going to click that. And it's just named it new survey. I open it up and it has my questions in it. Now I'm just going to delete both of these and make brand new surveys. I can show you how to do that. So first I'll just delete both of these surveys. And I'm going to make a quiz. So I'll just click create new. And I'm just going to rename it instead of new survey. I'll call it quiz one. And I'll also put it in the description. So complete this quiz. And then I can just tick and then I want to add my questions to my quiz. So I just click add question. So as you can see, this looks similar to the poll questions, but some of the question types are different. So I'll just show you the different question types. It's multiple choice, text, ranking, numeric, rating and pin on image. So first I'll just put in a multiple choice question. So I'm going to put in what is the capital of France? And then I'm going to put in the possible answers, put in Dublin, London, and Paris. And then I'm going to select which one of these is the correct answer. So set Paris is the correct answer. You'll see a message come up saying that this survey is going to be converted to a quiz. It's fine. I want it to be a quiz. I can also put in correct answer explanation if I want to. So I want to add an optional explanation to the answer, I can do that and that'll display to the students once they've answered the question. I can also change the allowed selection. So if there are multiple correct answers, I can say you can answer two or three or whatever number is there. So I'm just going to click create and I've done one question and now I'll add a few more questions. So I'll just click add question again. And this time I'm going to add a text question. So I'll just say, what is the capital of Italy? And then I'm going to click set correct answer. And I'm going to write Rome here. And if there are multiple correct answers, I could add another correct answer. I can also put in an explanation there. For now, I'm just going to click create. Now I'm just going to add one more question, I'll click add question. This time I'm going to try the pin on image and I'm going to upload an image. So I just click add content then click here and I've got a map of Europe here. So I'm just going to double click that and then I'm going to select where I want people to click. So this is Iceland, so I'm just going to cover it here. And I can put in a correct answer and explanation if I want to. And I can change the image if I want to and add alt text. For now, I'll click done. And I'm going to write um, click on Iceland. And that's the question. So when if they're correct, they'll click on Iceland there. So just click create. And that's my quiz done. So if you're happy with your questions, either be a quiz or a survey, and you want to push it at the students so that they can complete the survey or quiz in their own time outside of class time, you still need to start the session. So I'll just click start session here. And then you can copy the app link and share that with your students. Either you can share it through Canvas or on Zoom or somewhere like that. 
if I just put post in the link and show you what the students see, they still aren't able to access the quiz yet because you have to go back into the dashboard and click start quiz. So then when I go back in and um, the student, I can see the quiz here and answer the questions. So I'll just do that, pretend I'm a student, answer the questions. So I'll just go and get them all right, accept this one and then submit. You can see the student is getting immediate feedback and they got two out of three correct. Students can then take a detailed look at their answers and it'll show what they got right and what they got wrong. So you'll see here they got Paris right, they got Rome right, and it'll show you the correct answer was Iceland, and they got that one wrong. You might also have noticed that the Q&A feature was turned on for this survey because I have it set that Q&A is turned on by default on all of my sessions. But if I wanted to turn that off, all I have to do is go back to the Vivox dashboard, click settings, and then click on the features tab and turn it off from here. So I just click turn off and then click save. When I go back, you'll see that the Q&A tab is no longer there for the student. One other thing to note when you're doing these asynchronous surveys and quizzes is that if you have multiple quizzes or surveys here, I'll just put in another one, I'll import one quickly and show you. Just click import. You'll need to stop one quiz and then start another one for the students to be able to access it. So click stop quiz and then start survey. And then you'll see it's different questions here. And then if I want to, them to answer this one, I have to click start survey and then stop the other one. So then you'll see it's a whole other set of questions for the student. One thing to note as well is if you're running a survey or a quiz and you want to know who answered what, you may want to change the settings. So if I click settings and then click the identification tab, the moment it's set to anonymous. So when I go into the data of who's answered, I won't know who answered what, but I can change it to identified. And then if I click identified, I can also change these settings to show names, hide names or participants choice. They identified just means that I'll be able to tell who answered what. Since all of the students have completed the survey and I want to close it, I just close it like I would a poll. Click on the name of the session and then click end session. And then nobody can join the session anymore and I can look at the data afterwards. There's also an integration in Canvas for VBox. So if you want to add surveys and quizzes for your students to complete in their own time, this is a really good option. We recommend that you use the VVox web app for live polling and quizzing, because then your students don't have to log into Canvas in the live class. They can just join on their phones or on their laptops. But if you want to share a link to a survey or quiz that your students can complete in your, their own time, then Canvas is a good option. So I'll show you how to do that. Find the unit that you want to add the survey or quiz to and then click the plus on it and then scroll down and click external tool and then you'll see in the list of external tools VVox so just click that it'll take a second to load up and then there you have two options you can either select a VVox session or create a new one so if your VVox account has the same email address as you use for Canvas it'll actually link the two together. So I can add one of my current sessions that I already have, or I can create a new one. But I'll show you how to create a new one from here. So I'll just click create new and create a brand new one. So I'm gonna say my new session two. Then I can choose the kind of identification for the session. So either anonymous or identified. For this one, I'll just put identified. And it just gives you a warning that names will be hidden for other participants, but the participant's identity will be visible in the data reports. And then um, I can select self-paced survey or quiz. Now, as I said before, we recommend using the Canvas integration just for self-paced surveys and quizzes. And for live polling and Q&A, you use the VVox web app, as I've discussed before. 
just easier so that your students don't have to log into Canvas to join a live session. They can just go to the link either on their phones or on their laptops. They don't have to open Canvas. And you can see here, I can select an existing survey. Since this is a new session, there's no existing survey. So I'll click Create New Survey. And then I'll give that a name too. So I'm going to say My New Survey. And then I'm going to click Select. And then this will load up in my unit. Now you can see it's been generated as an assignment. So the first thing I want to do is click into the assignment and edit the name. So I'll just click Edit Assignment Settings. I'm just going to rename it to My New Survey. And also you can see it has points. So you can have these be graded quizzes if you want to, or you can have no grading. So I'm just going to remove the grading. This is just going to be a formative quiz. Say. So I'll turn that to zero, and I can also say do not count this towards the final grade. Then I'm going to click Save. I'm not going to publish it yet because I haven't actually put any questions into this survey yet. So I'll just click Save so my students can't see it yet. And it'll just load up. And then you can see here, you need to actually open the VBOX dashboard. So I'm going to click Open in New Tab. And now it's Open My Session. And then I can edit the session from here. So I'm just going to click the Survey tab like I did when I showed you how to make a survey outside of Canvas. Click the Surveys tab. So it also has the survey that I already made. Now there's no questions in it, but it has the My New Survey. I can put a description in, I can edit that description, and I can add a question. So I'm going to make it a quiz question. So I'll just do a multiple choice question for this example. So I will say, what is the capital of Ireland? And then I can put in the choices. So I'll put in London, Paris, Dublin. Then I'm going to select the correct answer. And then I'll get the warning that this is converting into a quiz. That's fine. That's what I want. And I can put in the answer explanation. And I can do different allowed numbers of answers. But it's just one answer. The answer is Dublin. I'm going to click create. And then I have my first question in the quiz. So when you've added all your questions to your survey or quiz, just like with the under instructions, you need to start the session and start the quiz. So I'm going to click Start Session, and then I'll click Start Quiz, and now I'll go back into Canvas, and I need to publish this. So I'm going back to the Units tab, and I'm going to publish this because it's ready for the students to access. And then I'm just going to click Student View and see what it looks like for students. So I'll click Student View. And they click my new survey. You can see the points aren't there. It says, and the student gets a message. Test student, your identity is visible. Your name will be visible alongside any questions you post to the Q&A world. So it's called test student because I just have the student view on and that's the name of the test student. But if this was an actual student, it would have their name there. So I'm just going to click OK and I'm going to Add to the Q&A board. Hello. And I'm also going to answer the quiz question. So I'll just purposely get it wrong. And then you see you get the same sort of feedback that you would get if you're using the web app. We recommend that you use Student View to check your published VBOX sessions in Canvas so that you can make sure that the correct questions are displaying. Q&A is displaying if you want it to, and everything is working properly. So now I'm just going to go over the different settings that you can change in a VVOX session. So to change any settings, you just click on the Settings tab, and you'll see there are five different options here. So Setup, Features, Identification, Theme, and Sharing. So under Setup, you can change the session name. So I can give this a different name. I can change the start date and time and time zone if I want to. I can edit the home screen image or alt text. I can also update the home screen content. So this is what will appear, the message that appears when your students join the session.
So I could just say welcome to this quiz on countries. Then if we go to the features tab, you'll see the different features that you can turn on or off. So you can have the Q&A message board on or off. This is the message board where students can submit questions that will appear on the presenter view and on their participant app. So you can have it on, off, or you can also pause it. There's also moderation. You can turn that on or off. So moderation is where when your students submit questions, you moderate them before they appear on the student app or on the presenter view. And we would recommend that you use this just so nothing unsavory gets displayed when you don't want it to. Then under poll settings, the profanity filter, you can have that on or off. And that basically filters out any unsavory words, basically. You can either display real time results or not. You can turn that on or off. You can display results on poll close or not. So at the moment, it automatically shows the poll result when the poll closes. You can turn that off if you don't want to. You can also change how the voting results are displayed. So you can have it that they're displayed as a percentage, as a number, or as both. You can also set an automatic countdown timer for each poll question if you want, instead of setting it when you're actually running the poll. Then for present view, you can show or not show the join instructions. You can show or not show the response count, and you can show or not show the QR code. Then these last two options we'll ignore for now. I click identification, you can change this. So you can have it that the session is anonymous or identified. And if you have identified, then you can either have show names or hide names or participants choice. You can also use passcode protection for the session if you want. Then I will go to theme. You can change the theme of the specific session if you want. So you can see this has an MTU theme, but you could change the colors if you wanted to. You can also upload your own logo. Then if I click the sharing tab, I can add co-hosts to the session. So if you have another staff member that can help moderating the session or add questions to it, you can add them from here. So the other staff member also has to have a VVOX account, but you just go here and you can search their name. So if I just click Shane Cronin, and then if I click save, that means Shane Cronin can also access this session. One last thing to note on the settings is they might appear differently if you've created the session through the Canvas integration. So you can see here, I can change the identification settings here because I made this session within the VVOX website. But if I went and I opened my session that I made in Canvas and go to settings and click identification. I can't change these settings because I made them in Canvas. See, it says here, this session's identification settings is configured through your VLE or LMS. And just a reminder to something I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you can change some of the defaults for sessions. So when you make a new session, they have certain default settings turned off or on. So I'll just close this and show you that again. I'm going to click back to sessions and then I'm going to click settings and go to admin settings. And as you can see, I can change the defaults here. And if I make new changes to these, it'll only affect new sessions I make after that. It won't make changes to sessions that I already have. So now I'm going to show you how to look at your session results. So that's after your students have completed a survey took part in a poll or took part in a live quiz or an asynchronous survey, you can look at the results after the session. So I'll just go into my new session two. That's the one that I made in Canvas. And then I can click on the data tab. So we can see some quick information at the top of the screen here. We can see that there's a total of three participants in the session. So if you had a class of 100 students, then you either had them go to the vvox.app link or you linked it on Canvas or on an online session. You can see how many people actually joined in. 
then you can see the active participants. So of those three people, how many of them actively participated during the session? And to actively participate, that means to either answer a survey or a quiz question or a poll question or submit to the Q&A, for example. Then we see there were six interactions in the session. So that's either submitting a question in the Q&A or answering a question. There were six in total. We can see that the participation rate was 100%. So all three of the people in the session participated. We can also download this as an image if you want. So that's really handy if you wanted to show other people the stats from your session. You can also click share up here and then public link and share a link. And then that'll show the stats from your session to someone else. So if I'll just show you what that looks like, I'm going to paste in the link. And then you see all the stats from the session. You can share that with anyone. If you want more detailed information, you can click download data report. And then that will download an Excel sheet to your computer. So if I just click and open that, I'll show you what it looks like. It's just loading up. And then you'll see it'll have all the information from the session. So it was all to test students for me because I was testing it on Canvas. So the three different people are just me as the test students. If I go to polling summary, there is no polling because it was a survey, but I can go to survey summary and see two students answered London, one answered Paris. So, and we can also see the results and that they were all wrong because the correct answer was Dublin. So that's why it's showing like that. Total answers correct, zero. And also the Q&A, we can see what students said what. So now I'm just going to go back into VVox and show you one more thing on the data tab. So you can see on the bottom, it says poll results, Q&A results, and survey results. And you'll notice on poll results, there's no information showing because we didn't have a poll in the session. But the Q&A results and survey results do have information. And if you want to, you can also download these as an image. If I click download image, then I'll just open it and show it to you. You can see the image and you can share that with people if you want to. And finally, if you want to, you can clear all the data on your session. So if you click this, that means it deletes all the poll results, survey results and messages. So maybe you were testing the session and then you want to clear the results and actually run the session for real. You clear all the test um, poll results and everything and then send it out again to your students. So you click yes for that. But for now, I'm just going to say no. So now I'm just going to click back to sessions and show you a couple more things. So as you can see, I have three sessions here. But I can click the options button on a session and edit settings for the session here. So I can click settings and edit the settings there. I can also duplicate sessions. So if I had two sessions I wanted or on that were slightly different, I could duplicate a session and then just make edits in it. And it's quicker than making another session from scratch. I can also invite participants from here. So I can just generate the link and copy that and then send that out to students. And I can also delete a session from here. Finally, we have some help guides that should help you when you're making VBOX sessions. All you have to do is go to tlhelp.eu.helpdocs.com and it'll bring you to our help site and you can type VVox in here or scroll down and find the help articles down at the bottom. Find them here, VVox polling platform. I'll just click on VVox overview and you'll see a video, a little bit of an explainer and then a list of different help articles that we've made that should help you with using VVox. Also, if you have any questions about VVox or if you're having any issues with using VVox, you can drop us an email at edtech.mtu.ie and we can get back to you with your query.